my slipper. Fell off. <laughs> What's going on guys? Hope you liked that intro. So welcome to another vid. So Toastale are brewing a pumpkin double and they have very kindly shared a 20 litre version with the home brewing community. So I quickly went on, downloaded the recipe, which obviously I'll leave in the link below. It's very straightforward. Um, I urge you to check out their other beers on their website because fair play, donating this to, to the community, it's very thoughtful of them. So there's a little bit of uh, preparation that needs to be done for this beer. You obviously need to get your pumpkins. We went to a local field near us and had a good laugh with the kids. Let's go! <laughs> collected three pumpkins, two for them. I was going to use the inside of the pumpkins that they were carving but it turns out I had to use a pumpkin itself um, just because of the sheer quantity that you need for this recipe which is one kilo so they recommend that you put 100 grams of muscovado sugar and roast the pumpkin and also to use 1.3 kilos of surplus bread and dry that for an hour. So I've already prepped that and got that out the way and now we're ready to start a normal brew day. It's a simple grain bill of 4.4 kilos of Pilsner, 90 grams of crystal medium and I think I've got crystal 80 I think over there, I'm not quite sure, um, 90 grams of chocolate malt, obviously the bread and the pumpkin and some more sugar as well, muscovado sugar. For the boil, I've had to buy some pearl hops. I've already got some halatau and a little bit more sugar again. <laughs> um, there are optional spices that you can put in. They recommend um, cinnamon, vanilla, nutmeg, ginger, aniseed, but I'm just gonna leave it as it is just to see if I can get that pumpkin flavor coming through. And another point as well, I don't recommend buying the supermarket pumpkins because they're they're very they're very dry and they're carving pumpkins. I don't know if there's a difference, but the ones that we picked were still attached to their roots uh, from the field, so they're not half composted like some of the ones that you buy from the supermarkets tend to be. Try and get your your fresh pumpkins and the yeast with this is a Belgian Trappist yeast. I went for WLP 500. So the OG on this should be 1.067 with bitterness of 50 IBUs, EBC of 80, and a final ABV of 7.1. Wow. For a 20 litre batch. Let's get mashed in. That's the pills that mashed in. You can see it's still quite loose because we are putting in our surplus bread. Fresh out of the oven, still warm. You can tell it's crispy.
what I'm also going to add to this because it's just got stuck mash written all over it is rice holes and these rice holes or oat husks just stop you from getting a, uh, a stuck sparge so it just helps the uh, the mash water get around a bit more I'll keep on mashing all this bread in we're about halfway there with the bread and with the rice holes as well and uh, we'll come back when we're adding the uh, pumpkin so after a couple of minutes of um, starting the mash I thought god that's looking a lot paler than I expected and then I realized I forgot to put in the chocolate malt and the uh, crystal medium or I'm using crystal malt 80 crystal 80 150 BC but um, but yeah and I forgot my bloody um, brewing salts as well so because there's like adding bread and later on adding pumpkin and stuff like that and, and obviously the uh, oat husks I was just a bit confused about what's going on. So we have 15 minutes left of the mash. I'm just going to pause it now and add the one kilo of pumpkin, which hopefully you can see it from there. All the juices have now come out from it. This has been cooled as well. And that 100 grams of sugar to start off with is... Uh, going to provide a nice, nice sugary solution into the mash. It's going to be a boozy one. lift this up uh, temporarily and then add the pumpkin underneath the um, cover plate so like I said this is only temporary until the uh, I'll put it back down into the sponge process mash process oh I know allegedly heat proof gloves So they are as well, bloody hell. There we are. Let's take this off for now. Look at all that bread floating. Here we go with a sugary solution first. Bollocks, man. It's falling apart here. Don't look very appetising, gotta be honest. My goodness, that was a bit of a faff. Um, but the pumpkin's now in, as well as that nice uh, sugary solution as well. I'm gonna add another five minutes or so onto the mash process just because of that faffage mash out in 15 minutes time oh this is heavy it's all that bread So I thought whilst that's sparging, we'll get measuring the hops. And seeing as it's 20 past four, I'm off all this week, so why not have a beer? So this beer is my No Smoke Without Fire uh, Porter. And it's pretty good. It's on a very low carb.
tons of smoke, not much poke. You can definitely taste the vegetable and slight warmth of the chilli in it. But a lot of smoke. It's good beer. 16 grams of pearl. I've never used pearl before. Ooh, oh, that's nice. Bang on 16. Then we need 30 grams for the end of the boil, which I'm going for 10 minutes before the end of the boil. 30 grams. And then we need 30 grams Halatau. I'm using Halatauer Hurstbrucker. Probably murdered that pronunciation, but it's not my first lingo. Very popular in German beers. So this is 30 grams at 10 minutes as well. Bang on, look at that. God, he's too good at this game. So we've just started the boil. And in with 16 grams of pearl. Major turbulence issue with that beer. It's not even highly carbonated. It's frustrating. That's my um, wet hop beer, green hop beer. It's pretty nice. It's not. It's not the best. It's not the best at all. Not much hops went into it. Only 20 grams at the end, which was about 100 grams wet hops. Anyway, we are now 10 minutes to go before the end of the boil, so we're going to add our hops. So that is 30 grams of pearl, 30 grams of Hallertauer Hurstbrucker, and some Irish moss. What we're also going to throw in is the remaining Muscovado sugar. Never heard of her, mate. Never heard of her. I need two hands for this. Oh, he said. I'm going to give it a good stir now um, and make sure that sugar is not going to catch on the bottom. And then we'll take a uh, take another gravity reading. Get a nice whirlpool going. So we finally reached the end of the boil. As you can see. It's all steamy. I'm just going to whirlpool this for about five minutes, then let it settle for about ten minutes, just whilst I slowly pump the wort through the um, counterflow chiller and recirculate it back into the kettle. Didn't have any trouble with bunging half a kilo of that sugar in uh, with ten minutes to go. No cutouts. No dodginess gone on. Let's uh, take a gravity reading. Arglid Mauer 1.063. Where's my phone? I was looking for 1.060 on my calculations. And the main recipe, 1.067. Getting much better efficiency assumptions on the uh, the old homebrew recipe from uh, toast ale let's be using sweeter bread so yeah 1.063 it's not bad it's gonna be stronger than I uh, first thought then isn't it get this recirculating slowly what I tend to do I the first half a liter or so I dump it into another tub rather than letting anything that's been sat in there for um, a few days to come back into the kettle. So, slow it down, and up she comes. So I'm going to wait for this to uh, chill for a bit, for 10 minutes, and then we'll be back for the transfer and pitching the yeast. And there we have it. So, beer has been going through the counterflow chiller just to give it, uh, um, just to sanitise it, I suppose, as best as possible. 
Um, what I'll do now, I'll turn on the chiller itself, the cold water feed into it. Now this time of year in October, it's getting colder by the day, so the flow of this water doesn't have to be much at all. And you should see the temperature changing and we're aiming for 22 23 degrees um, only because this is going to be colder so it's going to absorb that little bit more heat there we are we're up to 20 so we're on the right path let's uh, start chucking into the fermenter what I do I just pinch the pipe and lift it over simple as that so the yeast we're using is the monastery ale yeast WLP 500 so what I like to do is to pitch the yeast whilst this is aerating and at the same time dump in our tilt hydrometer so we are finally done Transferred, yeast is pitched, tilt hydrometers in, fermentation chamber is ready for action. Let's chuck it in. Hang on a minute. Ah, oh, peace. Can still hear something. Water. Good darts. Done. Pumpkin double done. So, hope that was interesting. Um, if you want to see if this beer will ever pour properly, please don't forget to subscribe. If you want to see how this beer turns out, uh, I'll be doing a review in a couple of weeks. I'm also brewing another beer tomorrow. Um, which is going to be Le Chouf clone. So I've been doing some research online. Went a bit nuts with a coriander seed. Um, the bottles uh, here in the UK just don't do it justice to how it is um, on tap in places like uh, Bruges. It's, it's so fresh. And I'm not sure if that comes from the leaf version as a dry hop of coriander or something like that. I really don't know. But I'm going to be going down that route as an experiment anyway. It's coming up to Christmas. You need some boozy beers in your fridge. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments box. I'll put all the links to my sources of information below as well. And yeah, see you in the next one. Yechida. Mm -hmm.